You guys, it's Pride Month, and I caught a cold. Welcome to my hard book, and sorry for a sick voice. Today, I decided to present to you a Pride Team doll. I will say it here and now, I am queer, I am gender fluid and pansexual, so Pride is very important to me. Queer culture is now more mainstream than ever and we hold out mostly to drag queens. Drag culture is a huge phenomenon and I'm sure you heard about RuPaul's Drag Race. But did you know there was also drag kings out there? Today, I am making a drag king doll. I wanted to celebrate with my heart. Queer people nowadays have it easier than ever, but oppression is still out there. People are still getting killed, especially if they are of color. And I will add my voice to this fight. The more we get seen, the more we get heard, the more we can change the world. So let's get to this sickening repaint. My canvas today is a lovely Dracula doll and she's about to break all gender rules. Well, not my rules, I'm breaking them by existing, but let's show it in art form for now. Well, you saw me, first thing I did was rerouting her with some Retro Dolls US monofiber hair. More on that later. The big chunk of work here is the shading of the face. The base of a good king's makeup is a lot of highlight and contour. You may not know, but I've had a few makeup classes in the past, and that sure do help. I've also tried the king's makeup on my face a few times, and I'm seriously thinking about trying out for real in the open. Also, about me being queer, I won't hide anywhere. I was born female, and I am much more than just that. I am also polyamorous, and currently dating one partner, which is the most beautiful woman there is. Making this doll is not only a queer celebration for me, it's also therapeutic. I usually present as very femme, mostly to avoid judgment, but I am more and more able to let out my inner boy. Also, funny thing, I used a lot of shading on this doll head so much that I successfully managed to turn the pink skin into a more flesh tone color. If you want to do the same, try shades of golden brown and yellow. I've used pictures of kings for reference. All that you shade is pushed back and all that you highlight stands out in the front. Make sure you create cheekbones, a masculine jaw, a brow bone, everything. It will masculinize a face, even Draculoras. Last thing I added here with pastel is a blue U on the temples and jaw. Basically, the beard and sideburns. Shave areas like that usually leave a blue U on the skin. I was also planning to add facial hair later on. Not sure yet if I wanted to go for fluck or glitter. That's the shading all done. It's my favorite step, can you tell? On to the pencils now. I still need to draw a few things on that face. I use mostly Arteza pencils. I was lucky a friend gave those to me because they don't deliver to Canada yet. I still use Derwent for black and white though, as those pigments always need an extra oomph. I see so many beautiful doll eyes on Instagram with amazing gradients and color shifts. I've yet to reach that level, but I'm still trying here to use as many tones as I can. Also, do not forget to seal the face again after a while. 
I think I was on my fourth layers of MSC at this point. And I did spray three initial layers before starting the face up. Always let the sealant dry to at least 30 minutes between coats. Here, that's my guy. Can you tell it's on a Draculaura? I gloss the eyes and the lips with Liquitex Eye Gloss Varnish. Then, I added the beard and I chose glitter. I also had this extra blue eyeshadow off camera because I thought a little something was missing. As you can see, I've only rooted the middle of the head, but then I realized the tacky glue had seeped out and had gotten in the hair. It was probably because not all the holes were filled when I sealed the plugs from the inside. Fortunately, the air cut solved my issue. I was not going to let the hair like that. I left the sides open because I had planned to cover them with flocking that I will be making with yarn. First I brushed it to untangle it, then I cut it into tiny pieces. Using tacky glue, the right way this time, I glued the flock on the head, pinning the hair away to avoid another disaster. Thinking about it now, I should have glued the flock first, then cut the long hair after, but mm, yeah, that happened. Time to get to the body, and yes, I'll be altering her slightly. Since most kings bind their breasts, I remove them using a small hand saw. Do be careful if you are planning similar. That surgery left holes that I filled in with some epoxy clay. After leaving the epoxy to dry for 24 hours, I sanded it and painted it to match the color of the doll's skin, and then I started shading her chest. I'm giving her pecs and abs, purposely making them look drawn or painted on the skin. Looking good so far. I could then put her arms back together. I had painted fingerless gloves on her hands off camera. Now to the 
outfit, the hardest part for me. I eyeballed an open shirt for her and used a glittery gold fabric for it. I pinned it on a doll to make sure the fit was good before sewing it shut on the wrong side so to hide the stitches when I'll revert it on the good side. I decorated the end result with embroidery on the borders, and then I painted a crown fit for a king on the back. Now on the pants. I cut a shape out of paper, and then I used it to cut it twice in black fabric, one for each leg. I sewed them separately then, together at the crotch in the end. I have no idea if it's the proper way to make a pair of trousers, but it worked fine for me. Once done, I added a little strings of golden chain and some um, fabric hoops that I don't know how to call uh, to be able to insert a belt there. The belt was from another doll, I'm unsure which one, but uh, it fit, it was nice, and I had that embossed golden fake coin to add for the buckle. Then I picked a fabulous pair of high heel shoes to go with this, because why the hell not? I said I followed no rules. Last minute I decided to add a few accessories. First thing I did was to give my king an eyebrow pursing using a big needle and some super glue. Definitely pierce holes before doing the face up though if you want to replicate this. I was lucky I didn't damage my work. And please overlook my poor hand coordination. Then, very little last thing I made was a bead necklace. I tried my best to emulate a rainbow. I could now put her, well him, back together. And it's with great pride that I present you, Florian Gray.
video? Well, thanks a bunch. Please like, share and subscribe. That little bell would be nice too. See you in the next one. Bye!